Hello. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of TIA Portal and S7 1200. In the previous video, we've explained on off and proportional controllers. The proportional controller is one of the three common PID controllers. In this video, we're going to explain and test PID controllers. In the previous video, we saw how the proportional controller was able to bring the liquid level inside the tank to the reference level. Now, we want to test, can the controller keep the liquid level at the reference level, when the discharging valve is open. As you see, if the discharging valve is open, the liquid level starts to drop, then, the controller tries to bring the liquid level, to its reference value. If you do the simulation like me, you will see that the liquid level will be fixed at 90 centimeters. Although, the proportional controller didn't have the oscillations like on-off controllers, but the current level differs from the set point, about 20 centimeters. Why and how this problem can be solved? Let's back to the proportional controller diagram. In the previous simulation, the reference value was 110 centimeters. In the steady state, the liquid level stays on 90 centimeters. So, when the system reached its steady state, the error was equal to 20 centimeters. Based on this error, the controller sends a voltage to inlet valve to open that, finally, the liquid level remained constant at 90 centimeters despite the output valve being open. Now, let's see why the error can't be zero. Assume it be zero. So, the output of the controller will be zero, and then, the filling valve will be closed. This state decreases the liquid level, because the discharging valve is open. So, the reference value and liquid level won't be equal. This means the steady state error cannot be zero. This is the proportional controller's weakness. Therefore, industrial processes use PI controllers. Let's see what are PI and PID controllers. PID is an abbreviation of proportional integral derivative. We've explained the proportional controller. If the error integral term is added to this controller, then we'll have PI. And also if we use error derivative, then we'll have PID controller. First, let's explain the PI. Suppose the reference level is 110, and the current level is 90. At the start time, the error is 20. The elapsed time is 0, so the integral output will be 0, but the proportional term will send a voltage to open the filling valve, to increase the liquid level. Suppose the error be 10. Now, both proportional and integral terms send a voltage to filling valve. Similarly, this process will be continued, until the liquid level reaches the reference value. Here, we can see the important difference between the proportional and integral terms. When the error is zero, the output of the proportional term is zero. But the integral term, uses past error values, so, its output can be non-zero. Therefore, unlike the proportional controller, the PI controller can open the filling valve sufficiently, when the error is zero. So the integral term compensates for proportional weakness. The PI controller has a small problem, that can be ignored in most industrial processes. When the level reaches the reference value, due to the integral term, the filling valve remain open, so, the liquid level will rise again. When the error value is negative, the system will try to return to the reference value. Therefore, the integral term will cause the controller output to fluctuate slightly, which will disappear over time. Note that, at the beginning of the time, the size of the errors is large, and the elapsed time is small. Therefore, the output of the proportional term will be larger, and will have the major role of the controller performance. 
As time goes on, and decreasing error size like these, the proportional output is close to zero, and the integral term will determine the controller output. Sometimes, the derivative term is used in the controller, to eliminate fluctuations caused by the integral term. Like the integral term, try to understand how derivative term works. In any industrial process, we can achieve a suitable controller by adjusting these coefficients. This figure shows the effect of each coefficient, in a suitable PID controller. Now, let's design a PID controller in TIA portal. Here, we have a level meter and this valve, which are connected to these PLC addresses. Here, the second network of my PLC program, converts the level sensor signal to a number between 0 and 300. This number indicates the liquid level in centimeters. The easiest way to implement a PID controller in TIA software, is to use the PID instruction. To use this instruction, first, click on add new block. Then, select cyclic interrupt and determine its time, like 500 milliseconds. Pay attention. We don't call this organization block from the main block because it will be executed every 500 milliseconds automatically. Now, from the right list, insert the PID compact instruction to create its cyclic organization block. This instruction need a data block to work. At its first input, the setpoint value is defined. At the second input, a variable of the user program is used, as source for the process value. Here, I can use the computed liquid level, that's a number between 0 and 300 centimeters. The third input, input per, connect to a PLC analog input, as the source of the process value. Pay attention. The PID controller will use only one of these two inputs, which must be specified in its settings. Similarly, this block has three outputs. Output value in real format, output per, for PLC analog outputs, and pulse width modulated output. I use this PLC analog address, which is connected to the filling valve. Let's go to this PID settings. First, the type of process under control, and its measurement unit can be selected. If necessary, the output signal of the PID can be reversed. In the TIA help, we can see this controller information, like its operating modes, the used mathematical relationship with its parameters description, and also its diagram. For example, inverting the controller output is done here. Alright, let's select the automatic mode and go to the next step. Here, the inputs and outputs, that are explained before, must be selected. Here, I need to modify the input range, the liquid level inside the tank, is a number between 0 and 300 centimeters. This part is disabled because the analog input has not been selected before. If necessary, you can change some output settings, and finally we can see the PID parameters. To improve the PID performance, these parameters must be corrected. First, let's test the PI controller performance with this default settings. Pay attention, you may not be able to simulate the PID controller on your computer, like previous projects. To solve this problem, which happened only in the simulation to me and other people, you either have to use real PLC, or use 1500 CPU, 
in the hardware configuration. In addition, since we want to use the factory I.O., we must use the appropriate PLC SIM 1500 template, which can be downloaded from the factory I.O. site. After all these, I have written the PID program in a cyclic organization block again. These two bits are used to activate the PID controllers. Also, after transferring the program to the virtual CPU, we have to change factory I.O. configuration, from S7-1200, to S7-1500. Now, the factory I.O. is connected to the programmed virtual CPU. Let's go to online mode. Based on the program, I have to activate the PID controller. First, let me change this auto manual selector. The next contact is activated by a switch from the HMI, which has been designed before. Well, let me activate PID controller. Alright, as you see, the PID controller is activated. I can change its set point from the HMI screen. Let's select 150 centimeters. As you see, the PID controller output is activated, and turns on the filling valve. This display shows the liquid level. Also, on the designed HMI, we can see the level liquid, and set point diagram, their value, and also PID parameters at the bottom. As you can see, as the water level passes the reference value, the controller starts closing the inlet valve. Let me open the discharge valve 50%. If you simulate this program, like me, you will see that after a time, and little fluctuations in the water level, the controller will fix the water level in the reference value. Now, click here, to see how PID coefficients can be tuned by TIA software. Click here, to start sampling, and show process and reference value. Here, select, and start pre-tuning. Alright, here is an error at start of pre-tuning. The process value is too close to the set point. To solve this error, I stop factory I.O to empty the tank and start it again. Now, the reference value is 150 centimeters, but the current level is zero. Let me start pre-tuning again.
as you see the TIA software modified PID coefficients. I hope this video has helped you to understand PID controllers. In the next video, we'll come back to HMI designing to use alarms and recipes. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click on the subscribe button.